In today's video, we're going to be looking at the comparison of the German Shorthead Pointer, or GSP, and the Kangol. These two sizeable dogs are both beloved for different reasons, many of which will be explored in this video. So, let's get started! Welcome back to the German Shorthead Pointer channel. If this is your first time here, my name's Mimi. I'm a registered canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the German Shorthead Pointer, then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect German Shorthead Pointers. So if you're a German Shorthead Pointer lover, thinking about getting one, or just started your journey with your new German Shorthead Pointer, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a future German Shorthead Pointer video. So then let's go into today's video where we will be looking at the differences between the GSP and the Kangol. We'll start with a quick look at their noteworthy history. The GSP was created to fulfil the need for a versatile hunting jog due to the rise of the German Empire in the 1880s. The heightened demand for meat and hides required a dog with a sensitive nose, discipline and an instinct to focus on the hunt. The GSP we know today were developed from Old Spanish Pointers and Brac Francais with the addition of German Bloodhounds for tracking and scent work purposes, whilst also softening the breed's temperament. In the 1860s, this mixture was further crossed with English pointers to improve their speed and pointing instincts. The end product was a sleek, intelligent, loyal and versatile gun dog with incredible stamina, a highly developed pointing instinct and an eagerness to retrieve game. Now the Kangol was kept by Turkish farmers for centuries as protectors of livestock. Named from the Kangol district of Sivas province in central Turkey where they originated, Records of such a dog can go back to the 12th century. Over the years, they have been selectively bred to eliminate the human and prey aggression, leaving nothing but a reliable, predictable character. It's thought that they are related to early mastiffs and can be characterised as a Molossa breed, alongside bully breeds and boa bulls. They were first introduced in the UK in 1965 and the USA in 1985. Now that we know a little bit about the history of the breeds, let's look into a brief comparison of their strikingly different appearances. Now, the GSP has a short, smooth coat which is typically speckled across the body and legs in a common liver and white paired with solid liver head. Another recognised colour is white and black. Large, solid patches of colour across the body are also common. These dogs are athletic to look at, with a large, barrelled chest, powerful hindquarters and a typically docked tail. The male GSP stands around 23 to 25 inches to the shoulder and they weigh 30 kilograms at healthiest. Females stand at 21 to 23 inches and should weigh 25 kilograms. They have alert expressions, bright eyes and wide, sleek ears that hang below their jowls. This aids in scent work as their ears trail along the ground, picking up as many smells as possible. When moving, they are to be elegant and sure-footed, which is a testament to their working heritage in versatile terrain. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. I just wanted to quickly let you know, if you didn't know already, I have a completely free course on the principles of canine behaviour. As a canine behaviourist, I've put this together with my years of experience, skill set and knowledge to help you understand all the areas of canine behaviour that are important for you to become a high-level canine leader, and then you can fix your dog's problem behaviours at home, or maybe take the first steps into working with dogs with problem behaviour. So again, if you want to check out that course, it's completely free of charge. The principles of canine behaviour, there'll be a link down in the description box below, and I can't wait to see you over on that course. The Kangol is a big, powerful breed with a dense, waterproof coat that falls slightly longer around the neck, shoulders and tail. The colour ranges from cream and fawn to dun and steel grey. It's common for them to have a strikingly black muzzle and ears, but otherwise their coat is a solid colour. This breed is well muscled and powerful, even at a standstill they're impressive. They have a large head with watchful arm and eyes. The neck is strong and rather thick with a slight dewlap. Whilst they're a big breed, they are longer than they are tall. They have a large chest, well sprung ribs, sloping shoulders and well set legs. A male can reach 30 inches and weigh up to 60 kilograms, whereas female can weigh around 29 inches and weigh around 50 kilograms. Their tail is long when they're relaxed, and there is a slight curl, but when they're alert, it curls right back up above their rump. 
Enough about the aesthetics, we'll now look into the temperaments of these two breeds. It should come as no surprise that these dogs thrive in a busy, active lifestyle. Loyalty and close bonds to their family are what can be expected from a GSP, but this can lead them to being capable of coping with being alone for extended periods of time. If they are left in an unstimulating environment, they tend to display destructive behaviours. This may never be an issue should you provide the right setting for them. They are also best suited to experienced dog owners or those that can allow their GSB to predominantly work outside exploring or working. Another key aspect of this dog's personality is that they are instinctively a very high prey drive. This is something that can only be curbed by consistent, strong training. Even so, you should be wary when your GSP is off lead as it can prove too tempting should a rabbit come into its eyeline. As previously mentioned, the Kangal has had the aggression bred out of its temperament. However, they have retained that wary and territorial nature. They are calm and protective, but also bold, naturally independent and very intelligent. Their independence lends themselves to living outdoors among the flock they're protecting, but they are also fiercely loyal to its owners. Their intelligence is what has made them so incredibly perceptive of their environments that they can judge who and what belongs on their territory. Once you've taught them their place, they will defend it to the end. They are an incredible combination of calmness and intelligence. They thrive being out protecting their land with very little interaction with humans, a true working breed of dog. If properly cared for, these dogs have similar life expectancies. A GSP can be with you for up to 14 years and a Kangal up to 15 years. Both breeds are typical to suffer from either hip or elbow dysplasia. This can be prevented with responsible breeding, but it won't prevent it completely. To focus on the GSP, a very common and very serious health concern is bloating. Their deep chest allows for the stomach to twist should enough gas develop. This is known as GDV, or gastric dilation and volvulus. Should this happen, a surgery is the only response to return the stomach to its proper position. Ways to prevent this is to use a slow feeder, not exercising for at least an hour after food, and serving smaller portions throughout the day. Aside from this, they should be fed properly and cared for in a suitable manner. These dogs are generally healthy. The previous notes are just things that you should be aware of before you think of buying one. Now the Kangal is a hardy dog. They are one of the healthiest breeds. Aside from the dysplasia, the other ailments you should be aware of are benign tumours, lipoma and entropion. The benign tumours shouldn't cause any issues unless they grow in an awkward place or grow too big. Lipoma is again a benign issue. It's a collection of fatty cells that build up into a mass. The same as the tumours, they should only become an issue if they're awkwardly placed or allowed to grow too big. An entropion is where the eyelids roll in on themselves, causing a lot of irritation to the eye. The only solution to any of these conditions is a surgical procedure, but none of them are typically life-threatening. It could be argued that a GSP is best suited to a working lifestyle or a hunting family, but this isn't a necessity should you provide the correct stimulation. As mentioned, they are highly intelligent and so need to be consistently trained with stimulating activities. A firm hand is best when training this breed. They have been known to ignore commands should they feel their attention is best spent elsewhere. For example, you may struggle to recall a pointer if they have already caught the scent of a rabbit. They need structure in their life. All in all, they are loyal to their owners and love to work. Keeping them occupied with fun, stimulating training is what will give them a high quality of life with you. A Kangal has a very high drive to do the work they were bred to do, much like a GSP. And so if you're training them for that purpose, they will be very easy to train. Their fierce loyalty to their owners will make them extremely susceptible to learning how to please their owners. Fitting with their calm nature, they respond best to words of praise and positive reinforcement. It isn't recommended to have these dogs if you can't give them some level of protection role. A dog with high intelligence is best working and exercising their brains to what they are genetically inclined to do. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comments section below, and don't forget that if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated German short-haired pointer videos coming here every week, so I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the German short-haired pointer channel.